Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the brand new 2019 American Ultra Stratocaster. Fender recently replaced the old Elite series with the Ultra series. And you're probably wondering, huh, is it time for me to upgrade? So here's the main differences. The neck shape has changed a little bit. We now have the modern D-shaped neck versus the old C to D, so it's going to feel a little bit thinner. They flattened out the fretboard just a hair right here, so instead of 9.5 to 14, you're now at a 10 inch to 14 radius. And they tinted the necks a more vintage color instead of just being a bare maple, and they returned the skunk stripe because we no longer have that truss rod wheel down here. You just have the access at the face of the headstock here. Something else new, they discontinued ebony on these since Rosewood has been given the okay by the Sites Treaty. And they've introduced the next generation of noiseless pickups. They're calling these the Ultra Noiseless. So those are some pretty minor modifications, but what's the biggest one? It's the sculpted neck heel right here. The old elites, they had the same cutaway, but what they've added here is this extra swoop and an extra cutaway right here. It just makes it so everything gets out of the way of your hand when you're playing in the higher registers. It really is an improvement on these guitars. And if you're truly considering one of these, that's probably the main feature that you're gonna want to know about. But another major change that's kind of controversial on this model is they swapped what the S1 switch does. They super simplified this. So when it's not activated, the guitars are the same. You've got your neck, you got neck and middle, you got just your middle, middle and bridge, and then just your bridge. But now on this new one, the S1 switch is a little bit more traditional. It just adds the neck pickup to whatever position you're doing. Essentially what that means for you is there are two new tonal opportunities here. So in your bridge position, if you have the S1 switch on, you now have the neck and bridge, which you can't normally get. And in this position, when it used to just be these two, you now have all three pickups on. And with any new model release, the price always increases. So these have gone up by $200. They used to be $16.99 through $17.99, and now they range from $18.99 to $19.99. And that depends on what body wood and finish you're wanting. But that's the other beautiful thing about this new series. Had they had not introduced this new Texas T color, I probably wouldn't have even bothered buying these guitars because I love this new finish. But here's all the options you can have. With an alder body, you can choose from Arctic Pearl, Cobra Blue, Mocha Burst, Ultra Burst with both fretboard options, and Texas T. But if you would prefer a transparent finish with an ash body for $100 extra, you can have the Plasma Red Burst as well as Age Natural. And both of those are available in maple and rosewood fretboard options. So all in all, that's 10 different options for you on these. But if you prefer a humbucker in the bridge, they do have seven iterations of those to choose from. The only finish that's exclusive to the three single coil layout is called Mocha Burst. You can't get that with the humbucker configuration. And if you like the ash body color options, instead of being able to choose what fretboard you want, they only offer the natural in rosewood and they offer the plasma only in maple. So if you're going super collector crazy on us, there's potentially 17 different options. And while we're doing some comparisons here, I kind of found it funny. Strat Ultra has actually already been used before. That's why I had to be careful and call this one the American Ultra, because in the 90s there was something called the Strat Ultra. This was part of the Strat Plus lineup. Essentially the biggest difference is, is well, this one has a flame maple veneer, not only on the front, but also on the back. You don't have any type of comfort cuts for the neck heel, so that's something that this one has over it. And you know, finish option wise, I mean, it just depends which one you prefer. I think this one looks awesome, but this one's also cool in a different way. The old Ultra has actually got pure ebony fretboards, and my goodness, this thing is as smooth as glass. This one feels better to play, but I think that's just because this is a new guitar that still needs worn in. But you'll notice this one has a weird nut on it called the LSR, but they both do have locking tuners. So there you go, the two Strat Ultras side by side. The American and the also American, but not American in title Strat Plus. But now that we've got history and spec changes out of the way, what are my first impressions of this instrument? Picking it up out of the case, once again, kind of similar to that Telecaster, it's got that slightly slender feeling neck, but it's very rounded at the same time. 
But what I really noticed when I sat down to strum it is you have that ultra satin finish on the back. So that's a nice feeling. It's smooth to the touch. It's easy to play. It's not super sticky, but I don't personally like this as much when they do it on the fretboard. I mean, I could see how some people prefer it, but I just like the goopy feeling. That's what I think when I think traditional Fender. But I mean, this is not really a traditional Fender, is it? <laughs> but one good thing about this being a satin finish is the little bit of finish that they accidentally did get over the frets. It's not quite as thick, so it doesn't really grab your frets as much when you're trying to play it. I'll probably still steel wool down these frets, just, just make it a little bit more effortless, but it's just a small thing I noticed. So there's certain angles when you look at the frets, they'll actually look golden because of that. But one kind of negative thing I noticed about the frets is there's a little bit of fret sprout here. Now, can we really blame Fender for that? No, it's cold when these things were shipping around. Sometimes it just has to settle in its environment and then everything will be good to go. Or you just gotta do a little bit of rounding off at the fret edges. And as always, that extra little cutaway, it is helpful. I mean, you don't have to have it, but it's definitely useful when you do. But the next thing, it all comes down to looks. I love the Texas T finish. And it works so well with both rosewood or maple fretboards. I mean, it's kind of a dark, oily, sparkle color, but not too sparkly. I think that's my favorite thing about this one, is it's not over the top. But the way the Telecaster I reviewed work with the anodized silver pickguard, I think it kind of steals the show a little bit from the finish, but it just pops everything and works great with that maple fretboard. Is this thing as cool as the jazz bass? Not quite. This jazz bass is hard to beat. I think what makes it superior is I like the block inlays. I don't know how I feel about binding on a Fender guitar at this point in time, but I would have loved to have seen these with the block inlays. But after looking at this guitar for a while, I finally figured it out. I knew Texas T was not a new finish. I had seen it somewhere before. And once again, it was my subconscious telling me, you like this guitar for a specific reason. Just like that Telecaster reminded me of the House Stark Tele, this reminds me of the John Jorgensen Helicaster. It was a Made in Japan exclusive. It has a very similar, but you know, a little bit more out there finish. The pick guard's still gold in color, but, but not anodized. You got the weird pickups in that one and the reversed headstock. I definitely gotta get my hands on one of them Jorgensen Stratocasters. For my final first impression observation here, the knobs. They're so big and bloated. Maybe it's just, you know, I'm new to Fender. I haven't had too many of them, but these knobs just seem massive. And I'm wondering if that was just because they built it in with the S1 switch, so they just styled these knobs after that. But side by side comparison here to this other Strat Ultra, I think you guys can see what I'm talking about, why these ones just look so big. It's not necessarily that I'm complaining that they're big. They're actually a little bit easier to use, I would say. It's just something I noticed. So let's go ahead, throw this one on the workbench and take an in-depth look at all of its specs and parts. All right, inside the Ultra Stratocaster, I got the shock of my life. Okay, so we've got a humbucker in the neck, humbucker in the bridge, single coil route. So yes, it's true. If you want the mocha burst and have a humbucker in the bridge, you can just modify one of these single coil ones. You could even put one in the neck if you really want to. You're just gonna have to change your pick guard. But here you can see the barcode in the neck pickup. It looks like there was also one under here. Everything looks the same as far as I could see. I tried to peel up just to make sure, but then I kind of ripped the sticker. And then you've got another one down here. And you've got your grounding tab located right there, right beside that. And then this is just your cavity for all your controls. But here's where I got a shock. Are these not the old noiseless pickups? I did comparisons of the pictures. And these are the exact same. N4 MVT. This looks like generation four noiseless pickup, so they actually haven't upgraded the electronics. I'm guessing this one is a fluke. I emailed Fender, I'm still waiting to hear back from them, but I was definitely expecting these to say Ultra Strat on the back, just like the Ultra Telecaster ones did. So the jury's still out on this one. Did I get a factory mess up guitar? I guess we'll find out. So I actually decided to wait to post this video until I heard back from Fender because I'm sure news sites would have picked this up and slammed Fender for it. Here was their official response. The very early Strat Ultras are using the same PCB as the old generation four. I'm guessing that was just to use up the extra inventory that they had, but you can tell they're the fifth generation because they've marked them with Sharpie, as you can see here, and they've updated the staggering of the pole pieces. 
So that's good information to know. Maybe these ones will become collectible one day. But electronics-wise, this is your S1 switch. It's always a massive thing. It looks like you have some sort of PCB on there. Then these are your two tone pots, and you do have a treble bleed on those. And just your standard five-way toggle switch right here with your anodized gold pick guard. Bridge setup wise, you have the two point deluxe tremolo unit. Then your output jack, uh, it's just pretty basic stuff here. But what I found interesting is you can actually see through to the alder body right here. And you can also see it in these screw holes, but not in the ones for the pick guard since they're slightly different screws. Let's take a quick look at the pickups here. I think that's what kind of stinks about Gen 4 to Gen 5 is they look the same on the outsides. But within the circuit, the neck pickup reads about 7.8k ohms, the middle position about the same, 779, then the bridge pickup, you get about 9. And we'll get the in-between positions just for fun, so 426, and these guys at about 4. And just for fun, we'll do the S1 switch too. So that would be these guys at 4.26. And then all three at the same time cuts it down to 2.78. We'll take a quick look around the body. You can always see this Texas T finish really well here on the workbench. It really comes to life with that gold anodized pick guard because it brings out the golden hue. You didn't necessarily see that as much on the Telecaster. It brought more of the silver out of the finish. So this is a very striking guitar. So your master volume has the S1 switch built into it. You just press it down like that, and then you have two tones. But this one is one of Fender's no load tone pots, so it kind of clicks into place at 10. You hear it? It's a little bit harder to move once you get it out, but this one does not appear to be one of those. But moving on to the maple fretboard, again, you have the satin urethane finish on the top and the back. And you have 22 medium jumbo frets with black pearloid dots. I like these things. They're kind of cool. It's better than just your standard pure black. I, mean, I know it's not real mother of pearl or anything, but it looks pretty good in my opinion. It matches the finish too. I think that's why I like the large inlays on that jazz bass because you can see more of this. As far as quality control goes, I found one tiny little dent on my fretboard. You can't really feel it. It's so microscopic, you can barely even feel it with your fingernail. That's located on the eighth position right here. Then if you catch it in the light just right, you can see like there is a piece of dust or something underneath this when it was getting finished over, or maybe it wasn't completely sanded flush. Besides that, you just have some light scratches on the fretboard, nothing too crazy. I did my steel wool treatment. Those were there before that, by the way. I tightened the tuners up and I added some graphite to the nut just in case I needed it. As far as neck specs go, I get 1.66 inches at the nut and 1.99 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.86. That always surprises me, 0.88. Very consistent feeling. As far as the scale length goes, 25 and a half inches. As far as the truss rod goes, you access it with this tool that's inside the case. I personally like adjusting stuff here because that's what I'm used to from the Gibson world. You don't have to worry about doing stuff down here. And then you have a gold Fender logo right here. That's different from the old Elite series. Those were confirmed silver. So that is a difference. It's just very hard to see. They catch the light and turn all sorts of colors anyways. And there's a look at the string tree. And the nut is made of bone. Moving on to the back side of the body, I've got it all disassembled here so we can see underneath the neck plate and underneath the trem cover. The back plate is the same material as the pick guard, just in case you've never actually had this stuff. Samurai Guitarist actually just recently got a rarity Stratocaster and he said that it felt like a chalkboard and that, that was a good analogy. That is kind of what it is, but you kind of get used to it and you like it. I always find when it's on the back, it kind of rubs up against your shirt or whatever you're doing and it feels kind of weird. <laughs> but as far as the trem goes, it looks like we get three black springs here, your traditional grounding wire, and that's the thickness of the block. But while we have it on the bench, why don't we take another look at this beautiful Texas T finish. But man, the more and more I look at this guitar, the more and more I want the John Jorgensen Helicaster. Because that one, it's a little bit more flamboyantly over the top. Because it's super sparkly. This is definitely more subtle, so most people will like this better. But it just makes me want to see those things in person. But here's a nice look at that scoop right here. You can see how this turns gold in the light versus when you get it, the light on here. It's just that area, and it gets sculpted away. So it's a nice new feature, a welcomed addition. It's nothing game changing like Fender was saying it was going to be. It's better than not making any innovation at all. Now let's go ahead and see what we have as far as the neck cavity goes. 
Looks like it says 7715495. Looks like at one point in time there might have been a barcode right there. Actually, if you zoom in, it looks like it says like June or July. That might say the 9th, 2019. There actually is a date stamp on this one. That's kind of cool. As far as the neck goes, at the base of the heel, it says July 8th, 2019, with a bunch of red stuff. Then you can see it was number four, and then you have another barcode there that says Neck Ultra Strat. And it doesn't look like the anodized guard has scratched up the finish on this neck like it was on the telly. But something I do want to make mention of, in case you're ever taking one of these apart and you're not paying attention, there's actually two different size screws. So these slightly smaller ones go in the top two holes and the longer ones go in the bottom. That's because there's definitely different depths in play right here. But there it is, the Fender American Ultra. A lot of people say this font looks like the Michelob Ultra, which it does, and I just kind of find it funny. Continuing up the neck here, you can see it's maple with your walnut skunk stripe, which has returned to these models, and you have fender locking tuners. I've got to say, the more I've been using these, the more I've started to hate these things. I keep having the issue when I'm stretching the strings out, the strings just unwind, so I'm not sure what's different between these locking tuners and like Grovers and stuff, but I've never had that problem, and I had the same thing with that Telecaster, I thought it was just an old string, but no, again, happened on that one, and happened on that one, it's crazy. But once you get the strings on and all stretched in and everything, they are nice tuners. And your serial number is located on the back here, Corona, California, US 19070715. All put back together, it weighs 7 pounds, 14.8 ounces, so once you add a trem bar on that, you're about at 8 pounds. Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones here. I've got the S1 switch off now, so we're just gonna go through it like a regular Stratocaster. So I've got your typical Strat stuff. But you have to remember, you have the S1 switch, and that just adds the neck pickup to everything. But as I was saying earlier, that really only adds two new sounds, because normally the fifth position is just your neck. So you can't really add your neck to your neck. Then your fourth position would be neck and middle. So you can't really add your neck to that either. Now you might think, hey, I have my middle position pickup, I can add my neck to that. But that just makes it the same as the fourth position. So here's a comparison of that regular, just these two. So that just leaves us with our first and second positions. So this one is actually all three pickups on at the same time. That's kind of a cool, unique tone. So if you take the S1 switch off, it'd sound like this. It adds a certain glassiness to it. I love Strat neck pickups, so having that with all that other good stuff is a lot of fun. Then you get your bridge and neck, something I'm familiar with in the Gibson world, but not so familiar within Fender territory. So that sounds like this. Mm. 
versus your regular just bridge pickup. <laughs> sound fantastic. They're not quite as bright as that Telecaster, and I just find I always want to be on the distorted channel for this guitar. I'm actually really digging the tones. So let's go ahead, do a few more playing samples, and then we'll get to my final opinion. <laughs> final thoughts on the American Ultra Stratocaster. Personally, I had a great time with this one. It looks fantastic. I'm in love with this finish. It plays really nicely up and down the neck. I even got along with the satin fretboard. Most importantly, it sounds awesome. So if you're still on the fence about these, I think it really comes down to finish options and how much you solo. Personally, for me, I could probably live without this extra cutaway because I really don't land up here in the solo registers very often. But it's nice knowing that it is there on the off chance that I do get there. But for me, it's all about the Texas T finish. I mean, as of right now, you can't really get this on anything else. And one of these is actually cheaper than the Helicaster, so this is your cheaper alternative if you like a guitar that looks like this. So quality control issues, the nut was not cut right on this model. It's a little bit annoying, but if you bend the, on the G string, you hear this? There's like a little ridge within the end of the nut. All this really needs is a little bit of a file to go to get rid of that. That way it's flat in there, and then you would never have those issues again. But you know, that's kind of a QC thing. Other things we found on the workbench were like a few marks on the fretboard, very minor. Then I found this little dent divot slash lacquer bubble at the end of the nut. It doesn't negatively affect the guitar in any ways. It's just something that kind of catches your eye though. But I had a great time with this one, so definitely check one out if you're interested. Now that my review's done, let's go ahead and overview the condition here. It's a brand new guitar, but I did put a few light scratches. But notice, the face of the headstock still has that full gloss finish before it turns into that matte finish on the back of the neck, as well as on the fretboard. I didn't put any fret wear on here, and I polished those frets up pretty good, the best I can. And you've got a few light scratches along the body here. Nothing too crazy, but you know, just average light play wear. I, I played this thing for probably about hour and a half, two hours. I had a great time with it. And this anodized pick guard, you can't scratch it up. Isn't that beautiful? 
Moving on to the back of the headstock, I do not see that I dinged it up against the ceiling or anything. <laughs> I forget which one I did that to. I think that was the first rarity Stratocaster, but even then it didn't really cause it too much of an issue. And the back, I mean, you might find some light polishing swirls and scratches here. So this thing is definitely still what I would consider new condition. But if I was advertising this one for sale, it would be listed as very good because that's just the highest I will ever rate anything. Let's go ahead and check it out under blacklight. Quick look under blacklight just for fun. Nothing too crazy going on here, but it would show us if there was like a brake crack or repair, finish touch up, things like that. Sometimes it works on these satin finishes, but not always on these poly finishes. It's kind of something we're learning together. <laughs> But it looks kind of cool like this too. It makes it look more like the uh, Telecaster. If you decide to purchase one of these brand new, this is the case you get. It's one of those nice fender molded hard shell cases. You get the TSA latches. They're nice and easy to open. There are three of them. And that middle one is a locking one. You get a nice handle and the interior is a gray color. Just in case you don't need a case for this thing, this will also fit a Telecaster. So it's a multi-purpose case in that aspect and inside your case compartment sleeps a lot of case candy, which is all of this. The certificate of authenticity, you get a little fender owner's manual here, the truss rod adjustment tool, you get two little Allen wrenches, as well as the Schaller counterparts, fender sticker, the case tag, case pass certificate. This is the push and tremolo arm bar. I'm sure there's somebody in the comments saying, hey, you didn't use the tremolo. Nah, I'm sorry, I don't have much of a use for those. You get three silica packets, case key, Fender online lessons tag and a Fender sticker if you want to put that somewhere. And apparently these cases are made in China. So I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the brand new for 2019 Fender Texas T Stratocaster Ultra. This guitar is a beast. I like it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.